Here we go, here we go, with peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Peace, peace, coming down. When the Bible says down, it means down, people. I, uh, you've had a hundred years of false science here, and more, maybe. Uh, you know, I, I watch some of my movies that have a globe spinning or something in the background, utter nonsense. Down is up, down is down, and up is up, people. <laughs> Uh, some of you need to get some science going. One of my science lessons under the 15 uh, playlist here. Jeremiah is on fire. We've got lots of work here. We're surrounded by work. Uh, we're surrounded by intelligence. It's not my intelligence. I'm not intelligent. I'm a plagiarizer. You know, I just copy the, the master. I, we're getting into law and grace right now. It's a big subject. It's a difficult subject to really, to really structure properly. I'm going to work on that some more uh, this year. And I'm going to present Law and Grace to you probably next year. And I'll give you a structure for it so that you can organize it because it can get a little confusing. And one reason Law and Grace is a little confusing is probably because God never wanted it to happen. God never wanted to probably talk, and I'm, I'm speaking for Father right now, but... Uh, I don't think Daddy wanted any of this to ever happen. You know, the, you know, this whole thing of Adam and Eve sinning, having to confront them, it, it must have been uncomfortable. You know, uh, um, God is not willing that anyone should perish. And uh, so it's quite obvious that he, does, he, he never wanted war. Now, God allowed war for 4,000 years with uh, Hebrews and their enemies. But you can tell by looking at Matthew chapter 5 that the Lord never wanted it, but it had, to, it had to be this way. It had to go this way. And some of you need to understand that. You know, uh, I had somebody tell me, uh, some teachers that I knew uh, in Los Angeles and so forth, uh, some of them were like atheist kind of brainwashed teachers, and, and one or two of them on occasion that, they told me that the Bible is violent, and I said, no, it's not. And they said, yes, it is. And I said, I said, for 4,000 years, God allowed Hebrews to be violent, but he tells you who he is in Matthew chapter 5. Also, he told you he hates violence in the Old Testament. But he obviously tolerated it. See, sometimes God will tolerate things, but it's not, it's, it's not the final enchilada. The, the final story is Revelation 21. And God's not responsible for mankind and him having to organize wars and what, whatever. He's not responsible for organizing wars. Because war came from the devil and Adam and Eve. Not God. He never, he never initiated any war. Now, what he did in the Old Testament was he organized war. Now, is he responsible for organizing war? No, because he didn't start the war. That's the whole point. And then when you go to Matthew 5, you see the Lord, he, he hates violence all the way down to the... And, and we can see in Revelation 21 that he hates violence because for, for eternity doesn't have violence. For 6,000 years, there's violence. That's the point. For 6,000 years, there's violence. But when Revelation comes, 21, and the new city comes, there'll never be any violence for eternity. In other words, eternity is nonviolent. But 6,000 years is. You understand that? So eternity is telling you God. Also, the master reveals his, 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 personal, his personality big time in red letters. You need to read the red letters of the King James Bible because that's where God talks to you straight up, as they say. Moses, these guys, uh, okay, he might talk a little bit, but when the red letters come, that's why I call this ministry New Covenant because we focus on the New Covenant here. We, we, we focus on, on the heavy stuff. We focus on the straight up conversation which is Jesus Christ is basically straight up true. That's what, that's, that's what he is. 
Moses is not necessarily straight up truth. It doesn't mean it's not true. It just means that uh, Hebrews chapter 1, God spoke in sprinkles. That's why I call this ministry New Covenant because for 2,000 years, we've got the big enchilada right now. We, we've got intellectualism on steroids. We've got the bottom line truth all in your face. So that's why we read it all day long. The master says you're in danger of hellfire for violence. That's one of the first things he teaches in the middle of chapter 5. You're in danger of hellfire if you're violent. Then he says you're in danger of hellfire if you call people fools. In other words, if you're about the business of hurting people's feelings, he might put you downstairs. Now, common sense for a fourth to eighth grade grammar-minded person, and it's not, it's not rocket science that they say, or it's, not, it's not understanding the principles of fission for Oppenheimer and, and, and Einstein or another. It's none of that at all. It's just very simple, a third grade grammar right there. Now, how many people miss that simple grammar? I don't know, but it seems a lot, okay? And, and uh, you know, uh, it's uncomfortable, but that's the way it goes. And, and when I watch Sherlock Holmes, I might watch Sherlock Holmes tonight. And I, I don't promote Sherlock Holmes unless you are a, a, a Christian who's grounded, because he gets into some dangerous stuff. Uh, Conan Doyle is basically almost Babylonian, but you can watch him. It's basic G-rated stuff. But here's my point. Uh, we, we, we can get lost here. And and uh, you need to pay attention, and, and it doesn't require, as he told Dr. Watson, you know, you're not really paying attention. You're, you're, a, you're kind of foolhardy, and you're giddy, and you're kind of silly, you know, and, and, and we're, we're, we're here to save a young lady's life, and all you, do, all you want to do is laugh and eat, you know, and, uh, and you're irritating me, but you're my best friend. I'm tolerant of you. You help out every once in a while with your loosey-goosey attitude. And, uh, and let's just keep going. And, and that's, that's the story. Because his loosey-goosey attitude would sometimes help. You know, his fragmented mind, you know, his hallucinogenic, you know, whatever he's got going on, Dr. Watson... He actually helps every now and then. But for the most part, he, he's not a big help. And his, his, his contribution is he's a good friend and a supporter, which is not insignificant. So we, we can't say he's not supporting. But uh, Holmes is irritated because he, if he concentrated, he could be much more help. But he's going to roll with him. He's going to roll with him as he is, as a friend and a an assistant. Okay. And if you read Matthew five and you skip over the fact that the master just said, if you call people fool or empty-headed, or you think about hurting people, just think about it. He says, if you think about hurting people, I might I might put you downstairs. A simple American terminology there for you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm laughing about using uh, you know, colloquial English or something, whatever. But the, it, what's the point? The point is, is that Sherlock, or or, or the Lord, let's, let's let's leave it to the Lord here. He he's basically saying that this is my personality. So for four thousand years he's organizing wars, but now we see in Matthew five. He never wanted to do any of it, essentially. But it was, it was part of a plan, and it was part of something that basically had to be done. That's quite simple. That's simple deductive reasoning. It doesn't, it's simple. It's very, very simple. That if he says that he's going to put people downstairs, uh, obviously from now on, he's the, new, he's the new sheriff in town. Oh, the master lays out some laws right away. First, he, The first thing he, he lays out is repentance and baptism. The second thing he lays out, oh, he's going to make fishermen of men and so forth, and we have the baptism of Jesus Christ. Well, let's skip that. But, uh, and Mary and, and Elizabeth and Zechariah and a few other items, right? But let, let, let's get to 
the sermon there on Matthew chapter 5. The first thing he teaches is attitude. You need to develop the right attitudes. You need to concentrate on being this way. Number one, number two, number three, number four, self-control, kindness, forgiveness, be a peacemaker, really, really hunger after in earnest doing the right thing. And then he says the person who does this is going to be basically under attack. And what a wonderful thing it is for you to be under attack. That's blessed. Okay, then he, and then after a few more things, he, he gets to what I'm going to do to humans who don't do what I just said, which is have the right attitudes. So he tells you the right attitude. Then he tells you the wrong attitude. Then he says, you're blessed, you're going to heaven if you have this attitude. That's his first lesson. Then he says, if you have this attitude, I might put you downstairs. And one of the first uh, components or, 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 or uh, one, one, uh, some of the first things that you don't want to do are to put people down. That, that's what we say in America. Okay? And along with that, not just put, put people down, uh, think about hurting them. Just think about hurting them. Now that gives you, that's why I call this ministry New Covenant, because the New Covenant and the red letters, you get the enchilada. You get, you get everything in short order, and it's profound, and it's the bottom line. It's where we go to be intellectuals. For those of you who want to be intellectuals, and the substance of this intellectual pursuit is what we're talking about right now. Now, let's go. Let's talk about law and grace a little bit more here as we switch gears. Hebrews, Gentiles, no matter who you are, um, you're under this law that you can't obey the entire law, so you need grace. So we, we understand that, right? You can't do it all. But some people try to do it all. Paul said that every mouth may be stopped. In other words, some sort of boasting point. Shut it. In Spanish, they say callete. It's a harsh term. We don't want to use that term too much, of course. But it means to just shut it. A, a, a proper way of saying it is, be, uh, please be quiet. That's just the... <laughs> We have some young people watching these videos. So. Uh, but it, it, Paul says that every mouth is shut. In other words, the law is supposed to first teach you that you're supposed to be quiet when it comes to you boasting about any performance or any work that you do at all, period, end of story. Now, Catholicism, de demonic witnesses... You know, maybe the Illuminati, drug cartel. Most wicked people base their life on performance. If you if if you support us, if you do this, you'll get that, and and so on. That's what makes a lot of what's happening in America with the MAGA crowd and whatever. It, it makes it uh, uh, unfortunately uh, probably just call it's evil in many ways. Because it's performance oriented. Now, now there are obviously there are components to uh, this this recent move to try to get America back on track as far as uh, uh, getting all of the uh, wicked uh, politicians and, and economic institutions who are pushing a lot of things on us as uh, Quakers. But we understand that disappointment. Yeah, well, well, yeah, of course. But what, 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 what the devil will do is he'll start sneaking in a performance. He'll start sneaking in things that are contrary to the commandments of Jesus Christ. See? Oh, so that means that the, that the people that you're fighting are just as bad as you are. Because they're boasting and you're boasting. So, so it's, it's some, kind of a, some sort of a fleshy war where, where I'm having a war with the bad people, but I'm still bad myself. That's the point. 
I'm not as bad as they are. That's what ends up happening here. Um, for the most part, in, in my opinion, but uh, let's let that go. In other words, every mouth is not stopped when it comes to boasting. This is why we have church, because we make sure that when you come to a Protestant church here in America, it's been that way from day one uh, here in America and elsewhere, other churches around the world and so forth, uh, that no one boasts about anything in the church. That's why it's really give me church or give me death. That's what we teach here. Once again, I'll say it one more time. It doesn't mean that people who are socially and politically involved are worthless people and that we don't appreciate them. You don't misunderstand what, what we're saying. What, what, what I'm saying is, is that you ruin, you ruin your activity by doing one evil thing pertaining to boasting, which is what Paul focuses on uh, off and on, is that no boasting is to be done here. So that when, when we're in a political or social environment, and you start boasting about yourself and your I'm a good guy kind of thing, we don't want to hear that. Because there's only one good, and you're not him. Now, if you tell us that you're doing good, and, and, and thank you for appreciating you, that's fine and dandy as cotton candy. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. If somebody paints my house, I'll say thank you, and I'll say, wow, it looks like you did a good job. Thank you very much, sir, and say goodbye. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why the Bible says, let others praise you and not your own lips. So we have all these people, TV preachers, you know, I gave 20%. God owes me a wife, you know. That's what Catholics teach. The Catholics teach the same thing as the TV preachers teach for, for years, which is you buy candles, God's going to give you a wife. If you pay 10% to the church, they said on TV one day, God's going to heal you. If you give 20%, he's going to give you, heal you and give you a car. And, and, and this is all performance-based garbage. It's all garbage. You, you, you're never supposed to say God owes you anything under any circumstances. Every mouth should be stopped because you can't say anything. You can't present your righteousness to God because what you did is stained. And, and, and that's the bottom line of Christianity and Protestant teaching. And uh, the, the, now, now, we're, now we're under grace. So some people think that, that uh, the laws are worthless because you're under grace. That's not true either. Because you're going to have to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love serves. Love is active. That's what James said. You tell me you, that you love the Lord and you have confidence in loving Jesus Christ and, and that's your goal and you stated it? I will love the Lord and, okay, let's see some activity, bro. Well, you, you ran off from your wife. That's not loving the Lord Jesus Christ. You're all talk. Loving the Lord Jesus Christ is practicing righteousness. That's why now the, the, the new law is, uh, not the old law, the old law is gone. The new law is you're going to have to practice righteousness. That's the new law. You don't have to be perfect anymore, but you're going to have to practice righteousness. That's the bottom line. I've had grace teachers tell me, no, it's, it's my grace. Oh, no, dude, you're not reading your Bible and you're flunking the class, bro. You're flunking the class. A chicken, a chicken might, might be able might understand that, that Christianity is basically learning how to practice righteousness. A chicken. Dude, come on. <laughs> you think grace is going to let you party or something? Come on, fella. I've talked to some Bible teachers off and on, you know. And some of them kind of lean towards that, that mentality, but and some of them are like straight up, you know. You can marry 20 times, you know. You can... Uh, 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 blatantly contradicting the scriptures in a hundred places, right? No. We preach the fear of sinning and that's what we do here. And both of them are glorifying God. The Old Testament is glorifying God. Everybody has to be perfect because everybody has to be perfect. 
Now that's that's more along the lines of Yah, but not Yahshua. Let, let, let me get into that for a while. Why the Old Testament basically have YH, and the New Testament has Yahshua? YHJH or YH by itself. There are no vowels for that, but you can stick a vowel in. Uh, people have done that to the Hebrew and so forth, and the Hebrews will do that, but it's basically YH. Okay? Why is that there? It's there because it, you're dealing with the Lord if you're dealing with law. The, the, the Lord is justified in being the Lord by condemning you. It's, 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 it's exactly what needs to be done, and it's legal. That means that the, 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 the name of Yah is glorified. But when we have Yahshua, Jesus, it changes everything. Because that means Yah saves souls, not Yah condemns souls. That's the transition. In Christ, you can now be saved. Abraham was in a holding tank down below your feet for a couple thousand years. Abraham was in a holding tank called Abraham's bosom for a couple of thousand years right next to the devil. He could not be raised and be placed in heaven until, excuse me, Jesus Christ successfully purchased Abraham's sins. But he was in a holding tank, separated from the people, human beings that are condemned. In other words, Yah had to become Yahshua. That's the point. The Lord had to become the Lord that saves. And he has to do that legally. So now we have legally Yah. It's not just Yah anymore, but Yahshua. Yah is not Yah. Yah is now Yah saves. But he's still Yah. He's still, he's still Lord. Now he's the Lord saves. Because it's legal now. The Lord does not do anything that's not legal. He's Mr. Law. He's Mr. Pure, Mr. Law. Mr. Do everything right all the time, every day. All he thinks about is doing things the right way every second. He's a choo-choo train of justice and righteousness. But in Jesus Christ, he now is a choo-choo train of mercy. He's going to give love to people and, and truth and knowledge and 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 take to the, get them out of jail all at the same time. Wowie kazawi. That's why we praise the Lord for so many different things. Because you just got a whole lot, my friend. You beloved in the beloved. You just got a whole lot. That's why we have the word admiration or adoration. Because it basically means we're in awe here. You went to the AM PM grocery store or the convenience store, and there's just too much good stuff. Donuts, Twinkies, and take the sugar out, of course, but uh, donuts, Twinkies, sugar water, soda pop, all different kinds of flavors. Okay, there's too much good stuff to talk about. We, we, we don't have time to enumerate it, kind of, right? And that's basically the, kind of the way we are here. We, 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 there are too many things to enumerate, uh, you know, uh, ascribe to the Lord, the glory due to his name. There's just too much going on here. We went over beauty here. I have beauty up here. All the things that you're going to get in heaven. A new city, a fruit, a crown, a new name, uh, the morning stars in your face. Uh, you're going to walk on streets of gold. You're going to drink out of a river. You have poor, four uh, pearly gates to walk through and and all of this, and oh my goodness, and you, beautiful angels are flying around, and you got a wonderful place to relax where there's no nobody hassling you. It's a city called peace. Want to keep going, all the good things that are coming to you? Okay, we, we don't have enough time. Uh, let's get back to the, you know, it's not just Yah anymore, the Lord, it's, it, it's the Lord loves to save right now. 
That's what's going on right now. God was telling Moses, said, I can't save you people because the Son of God, my Son, has not legally purchased your errors and removed them out of my face. But, 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 but he can select people who come to him, and, and, uh, and those, those errors are gone, gonzo. So you were graced with an opportunity to repent and be baptized. If you allowed yourself and yielded to that, then we basically have a winner on our hands. And, and all of your sins are gone, and the remission of sins is yours. So basically, there are two glories here, and one glory is the glory of the Old Testament, and one glory is the glory of the New Testament, and both of them are righteous. Uh, unfortunately, the first righteous uh, uh, statute or, or, or covenant situation is not good for you. And that is, if you can be perfect, we, we, you can hang around. The New Covenant comes along and says, you don't have to be perfect anymore, but we, we want to study the law. We want to study the law because, first of all, it shows you the character of God, that he's pure, and that you can't be this way. Every mile should be stopped as far as boasting goes. And also, you, you, you can see that this is what God wants you to be like. He wants you to put on the image of Jesus Christ. He wants you to come to Jesus Christ, and then he wants you to put on these behaviors, which are, I don't want to commit adultery, I don't want to steal, I don't want to lie, and you, you want to put this on. By the power of God and the guidance of God, you're going to put that personality on. And the chicken can figure out that this is the, the goal of the perfecting of you and, and, and the molding on the potter's wheel and you circle the altar of fire so that you become that cleansed person. You're, you're immediately cleansed and then you're subsequently cleansed. Uh, some people say that, that there's only one cleansing. No, Paul talks about two cleansings. You have Corinthians 6. Uh, Jesus tells Peter, you're clean, but there's also a process of cleansing. That's called perfecting. And God basically wants all Christians to go through that process, and Paul says it needs to be accomplished in everybody. Thessalonians. He, God wants it accomplished basically through everyone. And, and accomplished means you've got to deal with it. Those are difficulties, chastening, spankings, and growth. It's very simple. It's not complicated. That's required of you to allow that discipline. To yield to that discipline. And love of Jesus Christ will yield to the discipline because you're focused on owning that love and you don't want to lose it. That's the pearl of great price. It's very, very expensive. It's very valuable. There's nothing more valuable than you owning the love and safety of Jesus Christ. Nothing. And the, and, and the field that the Master talks about, you're going to exchange everything in the field. Lord Jesus Christ, you take everything in my field, whatever you want, because I found your love, and I found forgiveness, and I found a place and a path like Jacob to heaven, and I want, I want, I want that road. I, and it sounds like a good road to take. So you take whatever you want, boss. And love will do that. People, people who don't love God, they won't do that. Because that's what love is, laying down your life for the brethren. So you will fulfill the royal law of loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor the way you love yourself. You will fulfill that by laying down your life for the brethren. You know, it's kind of like James said, I want to see some laying down of your life, bro. I want to see some love out of you because love lays down its life for the brethren. Jesus said he loved the disciples and he's going to lay down his life for them and that's proof that he loves them. There's your evidence. And it's a lifestyle for us and it may not be uh, an ultimate cross for you as Peter and, and other gentlemen 
uh, who died um, horribly, so to speak. Your, your, your cross might be a very simple cross. Um, John wasn't beheaded, evidently. He, he lived a, a, a quite a normal life. He got harassed, um, obviously, from some of the brethren, and there were some false brethren, and obviously he was irritated by uh, the Jehovah Witnesses knocking on his door. He told the women, don't answer the door. Those are devils. Denying Jesus Christ as, as the Lord. That's heresy. That's damnable. Stay away from it. John didn't party, so there's a cross for him right there. You know, if you don't party in this world, th that can be a cross, general discipline. In other words, molding and shaping of you doesn't necessarily mean affliction and, 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 and adverse conditions. It, it can be you just going to bed and being disciplined. Christianity is a broad subject, isn't it? You know, you're going to bed and not going to the party it can be considered discipline. It can be, con it can be considered uh, uh, growing in grace. It can be considered success in, in growing and, and, and being perfected. It's all one thing. It's a lot of, there's a lot of components to you being perfected. Patience can be part of it. It's part of it. Not just, not just facing difficulties. All right, I'm, I'll let you go for now. Uh, this is a deep subject, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let law and, and grace go. What is law? What is grace? What's the difference? Well, like I mentioned uh, they, they, they have a lot in common because of, you, you, there, there's laws in the Old Testament, there's laws in the New. And the law in the New Testament is you must love the Son and go to the Son, get on your knees, and get back in order. You're a servant. And, and your creation. Get hip and acknowledge it, and we have a winner on our hands. I, I'm a servant. Uh, I want to be a servant. I'm a, I'm a creation. I'm not a creator. Uh, I, I've sinned against God. I need to be forgiven. And will you please, will you forgive me, Lord? I confess I'm a sinner, and I want to love you and serve you, and I want to devote my life to pleasing you. And that's all there is to being a winner here. Okay? Maranatha.